On Sundays, bring the hookah to the table. She gon' smoke it till her lungs ache. That's brunch on Sundays. Posting pictures on the gram, hashtag and Sunday fun day. Going Chocolate City, DC girl Sadiddy, Valley Park the Wraith. Here's a hundred fifty. Fitted master linen, linen master. Check, check, check. Welcome back to the Young OG Perspective, where we give you a new perspective. A fresh perspective. A Young OG Perspective, baby. Yup. You know what it is? It's the fresh kid with the beard and no fear. And today we came to push positivity. Uh. We came to change the narrative. Facts. And most importantly, we came to move the culture. Woo. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, if I'm the CEO of this gentleman to my left, he is the CFO. Money bags. That's right. That's right. He goes by the name of Londo, a.k.a. So tailored. A.k.a. Londo Esco. Bars. Bars. A.k.a. Watch your back, cuz. We ain't watching for you. We looking from the left to the right, but never behind us because your ass was never in sight. Never, not once. Like our guest today. Ooh. <laughs> Golly. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like our guest today. And we ain't even, you know, we, we usually have more shenanigans yeah. after that intro. Yeah, I like it. Um, but let's get right to it, man. Today we are sitting with Mr. Michael McHenry. How you doing, oh, brother? Welcome, dude, I'm, welcome. Listen, I've been wanting to be on this show with you guys <laughs> since I saw it drop for like the first time. Oh, I appreciate <laughs> right that. Now, I'm feeling like I'm the one lucky to be at this hey, table. I appreciate yeah. that. I appreciate oh, yeah. it. Man. And you are bringing us, uh, talk to about talk to us a little bit about this um, champagne we're going to start drinking before, sure. uh, before we do a cheers. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, listen, man, the whole essence of this brand, right? Brunch Me Hard, Sunday's mm -hmm. Best, what we're sitting in right now. The whole essence of this, where it came from, was that there was that like, when you pop the bottle of champagne, like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're here. Yep. You know that feeling. Yeah. And it, and it means something different to everyone, but it's very aligning. Yeah. Like you pop the bottle and you're just like, okay, goosebumps. Okay, it's on. Yeah. And so to me, it's like every moment starts with a, a nice glass of of champagne and the bubbles are always good and you can see them just raise it to it. the top. And that's something I appreciate yeah. about champagne is you always see it rise. Yes, you like it, you I love it. it and we love yeah. it collectively because yes, we will never turn yeah. down champagne. So let's get a quick cheers, Michael. Yes, sir. Or, see, now I'm, I'm throwing all the way <laughs> off with Michael and Mike. <laughs> yes, sir. Appreciate it, good sir. Thank you, Yeah, man. this is this Salud. is a beautiful, yes, this is a beautiful a composition. This is uh, Gruet Farms out of New Mexico. Mm. And this is the Sauvage, which is their oh, uh, collaboration with Zero Dosage, which is like another cool um, uh, just collab that they put together. Oh, shit. And so, yeah, this is their uh, this is their take after the collaboration on their Brute. And as you know, it Bro, so really you yeah. so from the sneakers to champagne, mm -hmm. you keep everything aligned. <laughs> Listen, dude, everything, I think, I think life's about intention, man. Oh, you know? yeah, that's a fact. Talk life's that about intention. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you're going to drink something, you better know what's in your glass. You're going to wear something, you better be proud of it. I love yeah. it. Right? You can appreciate that. I yeah. know you guys appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, we started our journey mm -hmm. 20 years ago, not even knowing that we were friends yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because I'm buying clothes from you yep. 20 years ago. <laughs> yep. Right? And so, uh, yeah, it's cool, man. That's what's up. Well, just to let you know a little bit about this platform, yeah. um, we really want to highlight people that look like us, talk like talk like us, come from a similar background, sure. like we know you do. Yeah. And you know those three things that I said. You know, push positivity, change yeah. the narrative, and yep. move the culture. We know that Let's you're go. checking all the boxes, but Thank most you. importantly, we know you're running a mile a minute. Yep. So we want to <laughs> slow you down. <laughs> I'm and here give, and give you your flowers while you can <laughs> still you, smell man. them. You know what Appreciate I mean? I know that. you get a lot of love on social media. Sure. Thank you. Um, but it's different in person. Yeah. yeah. Right? Dude, listen, um, it's so, humanizing. Yeah, so yeah, sure. with this platform, don't hold back. You can cool. curse. All right. You know what I mean? Um, well, it's and, a good thing because yeah. I'm going to be me no matter what. So I'm glad you're know welcoming that to the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah, you can curse. So yeah, don't yeah, don't cool. hold back, man. Cool. This is this is what oh, that's yeah. about. So first so, and foremost, what is, what what establishment are we currently in yeah. right now? Because I know you got a lot of them. Yo, so this is Sunday's best. This is um this is one of those near and dear, like very close to the reward center like brands. Mm. Right, talking about that champagne and popping the 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 top of that bottle. Uh, and the essence of what we create here. And I always knew that that there was a real opportunity to kind of bridge, like create that connectivity, bridge that gap in the community. And uh, and I knew brunch was a bit of like the conduit, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Like the connector. Yeah. If you think about it, it's like, dude, if I hit you up, I'm like, hey, Zoe, let's go, let's go catch breakfast. Right? Yeah. Okay, cool. But if I hit you up, I'm like, yo, we're going to brunch. You're like, oh shit. Okay. You're like, you're like, you're like what am I gonna yeah, wear? Like, yeah. What am I gonna wear? Yeah, Where are we going? It's a yep. Hey, listen, are we are like, listen, we ride share, like we get yeah. a party bus. Yeah. Like, what's gonna happen? Because we're gonna turn this up. Yeah, absolutely. And that exact reason is why I built Sunday's best. Okay. Because I want people to celebrate a Tuesday like it's a Sunday out of mm. town. Yeah. And that's what we see here. 
Like you've, you've experienced it, yes, right? But people come in and it's like on a, on a Tuesday, dude, they're dressed up mm -hmm. literally like it's a Saturday in Vegas. Yep. Yeah. And in Utah, that's rare, mm -hmm. yep. right? People don't lace up in Utah. And when they do, it's like, it's, it's not for brunch, it's, it's mid, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it's yeah. for brunch now, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? It's for brunch now. So we're sitting in what I feel like is our best work. Yeah. What we're sitting at is a table that I feel like is a 15 year overnight success. Wow. That we really worked hard for. Wow. And, um, not only was the vision there and I think good and aligning, but my team really, like they really showed up for this one mm -hmm. and they continue to show up. And we just, we just crossed our one year anniversary, believe it Dang. or not. It's crazy. We've got three others under some form mm -hmm. of, uh, of development right now. And wow. the bar's only raised. Wow. Dang. Right. We're not going to say, oh, Hey, let's, let's keep up with the, with the, you know, our, our, uh, our Sunday's best in Sandy, our mm -hmm. 1.0, but like, what is the next most furthering version of yeah, what we're doing? Yeah. How can we continue to, to create greater connectivity to like just up the game, mm -hmm. right? Create the essence, like provide the platform for you to come out and just be you. Yeah. And, and it's a, it's an amazing thing when you create that kind of space at the table for people. Wow. You know, you can see like, even from like the branding around, whether that's the champ, champagne in the membrane, yeah. right? We're leaning into yep. music a bit, whether that's easy, like Sunday morning or day drinking behind me, yeah. like these subtleties and our taglines are there to like, kind of give you permission. Yes. Yeah, like, we're saying, the one hey, like, let loose. And we're saying, mm -hmm. Hey, like wear that dress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like fucking suit up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, the and one behind way, you. Bro, hey, hard, show, like, show them titties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, listen. I, I mean, shit, I'm not going to be mad about it. Like they're beautiful people brunch, baby. Be. Like beautiful people, brunch. absolutely. Yeah. Listen, dude, you already know people have been on your platform. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm there with yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. But I'm, it's just I'm like you, you see that, yeah. right? It's like on a Wednesday, it's okay. Mm -hmm. well, it's like cool. it's okay in 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 what used to be considered like Mormon suburbia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To come out and drink <laughs> yeah. and have yep. a bottle of champagne on the table. Yeah. At one o'clock on a Wednesday, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, it was the first time I ever saw it happen in Utah consistently. Was it Sunday's best? Wow. I, I've never Crazy. seen it before. I've been in this game my whole career. Right. I've been in this game my whole career. Yeah. Always based in Utah. Utah's always been home. Mm -hmm. I've opened many restaurants across the Southwest, but I've never seen it until this brand. And that's when I was like, okay. Yeah. Like we're here. Definitely. Like we've got something. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, man. we've got something. Definitely cool. Yeah, it's cool though, because like you come here, it's very Instagrammable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very <laughs> social media worthy, yeah, right? Of course. But it also makes you feel like you're not in Utah. Yep. Like this reminds me of Somewhere you would find uh, like a bigger market. Yeah. Say like, a bigger market. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 they do like, this, they do this most, most major market. markets. It's, yeah. it's expected in other markets. Yeah. Right. You go into you go into LA expected. You go yeah. to New York expected. Yeah. Atlanta, Chicago, Scottsdale, yeah. wherever it might be, it's expected. In Utah, they people just held back. Mm -hmm. Right. They've held back. And what I love about hearing you say that, bro, mm -hmm. is that that's why I worked with a, a specific design team here mm. that came from high-end residential and like boutique hotel. Yeah. So wow. when you walk through the door, you're like, okay. Like what? Am I in Pulp Trinks? Uh, yeah. Am I like in South Beach? <laughs> yeah. It's crazy because like, I am was... I like are these yeah. mountains or is that just like overcast in the ocean? Yeah, right. But that that was the intent. I wanted you to come in, and right when you walked in, you're like, okay, like I wanted you to feel that because I want you in vacation mode when you're here. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. that's not just because I'm I'm selfish about you only drinking. Now, of course, I'm I'm selfish about the economics, right? Yeah, yeah. We're not here on scholarship. Yeah. Right? right. No one's here. No one's in business on scholarship. And if they are, mm -hmm. like, they don't stay in business long. Right. right? We're right. in the business to make money. Yeah. But what we do, like we oftentimes say, how do you create you you fill the a gap, a void, a service, go out and, and solve a problem. For yeah. me, it's a little bit different. Yeah. I'm out here to create experiences. Right. For you. I, I listen I'm to an experience your, creation. Yeah. I listen to your episode on the bullpen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great, yeah. great fucking podcast. Yeah, I talked some yeah. shit on that. You were, you were talking about the heat on that one though. That was the platform though. Yeah. That was the platform. Yeah. Like, but I like, I loved what you said when you said, I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm looking at the value <laughs> yeah, and a lot of, a lot of business yeah. owners, a lot of entrepreneurs are concerned about the, the bottom line. Well, you have to be in a sense, yeah. right? But like for you to say, no, I'm going after the value. I want to create these experiences. I want you to, yeah. you know, Easter to pay for June. You know totally. what I mean? Like you're, like, you're, you're thinking. That's a, what the sign a is, different right? Way. When you're talking yeah. about like, Hey, this is a place to come in and be Instagram. Well, to me, what is is what I believe is we create a, a space for you to be seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Because yeah. who sat at this same table would blow your mind. Right. And like we're not even here like stargazing, but yeah. dude, like the whole team, right? The yeah. jet, they're I, in I here seen, like I seen the Halloween weekly. party. Like they're yeah, <laughs> right. But like, like, like I don't, dude, it's 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 the variety. It's not even just like your A-list guys. It's mm -hmm. just the reality of the people that sit here. And that's what's up with branding, right? I'm gonna throw some nuggets out to the entrepreneurs that Please, are listening. Let's go. But right now, the reality is the people that are already sitting at your table, they've already voted. Yeah. Right. Mm. Now you have a chance to win with them, but the reality is they already made the decision. They made the reservation. They already showed up. They're already paying. Yeah. You have a chance to protect that experience and gain their advocacy, right? 
But like, for instance, you'll notice how much space there is between that sign, right? And the next chair. And the reality is you could put two more tables there. And make that money, yeah. Right? And most most entrepreneurs, they right? Would. Most business owners go, listen, those two seats, you know this in yep. retail, yep. like per square foot has a high value, yep. right? And so a per square foot in a brand like this, you got to look at like a brand like this per square foot on an annual basis worth more than two grand a square foot. So you got to just like, Sheesh. if you start to run that in parallel. So the reality is here, to me, I can put another eight seats there and I can turn them somewhere between three to five times a day, depending on that type of like whatever day it is of the week on the, on the weekends, I'm going to turn it five times during the week. I'm going to turn it two to three times. Wow. And so th yeah, there's a great cost association with it, but I'm going to tell you right now that every single day there's probably How on average yeah. two dozen <laughs> to three dozen of that one sign alone. Wow. And when that hits social, you know, this, Gone. you guys understand where's that? Yep. Like, listen, that, that outperforms that table, those two tables, like five to one, eight to one, 10 to one yep. all day long. The pictures build tomorrow. Yep. Mm. I always tell people, dude, that, that opportunity to be Instagrammable, that opportunity to, to have your brand presented in an environment where all the attention is, that's what builds you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That. Right. That's what builds your business. Yeah. And so we get romantic about the now. I'm romantic about tomorrow. Mm. I feel like, like you said, like no looking back. Yeah. Maybe I never spend any time back hey. there. I'm, I'm so forward looking Talk that sometimes that I forget to be right here. Yeah. Like I'm like, I damn near, like I feel like I take futuristic steps. Mm. Yeah. Like I'm going to say I have a crystal ball, but fuck, I feel like I can look, I can literally look around corners. Yeah. yeah. Like so, I feel like I have that. Let me stop you right there because yeah. you said something great that I want to, I want to yeah, touch cool. on. Let's go. Married man. Yeah. Beautiful wife. How long have you been married? Yeah. So, Total 11 years. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful daughter. Yeah. Um, how do you slow down and take time for your family? Because I'm going, I'm, I'm a, a lot of the things yeah. you're saying, I'm really resonating with because <laughs> yeah. I'm a lot in the same way. So you want to get real, you want to get and, real deep. Here and I got my yeah. brothers right here. Thank God to my brothers. My, my I love these yeah. guys. Cause they're like, Zo. Yeah. Yeah. Zo. Yep. Chill yep. out. Yep. Chill <laughs> out. You know what I mean? So how do yeah. you, how do you get back into your shoes? Yeah. To, to really spend time, you know, have that quality Dude, time is, with your loved ones. Is, this is such a, rips, a rich space for me right now, mm -hmm. right? Because in the last two years, I spent the majority of that separated from Christy. Mm. And, wow, uh, and part of that happens comes from like not watering that garden dude it yeah. comes from not making those deposits it comes from uh it's like you know the, leaning uh, in your business we like call got, that emotional tax totally yeah. and i got like and i talk about like make deposits you make withdrawals right you, yeah. you got to make you got to have a positive balance you got to yeah. make more deposits than you do withdrawals right and so uh being a kid that came from really uh few choices right like the one thing that i feel like was a bit of my magic recipe and a bit of my success is i never spent a single day in my childhood not feeling incredibly loved mm -hmm. but i have a lot of like mentorship a lot of people investing in me my parents you know they were just the split family doing their own thing my dad's working my mom's working they're just you know out there surviving but no one's out there like surviving thriving developing and growing and i just dude by about 15 i realized that like it was time to raise myself like mm -hmm. it was really time to get out there and make something and um and one of the big associations I made young in my life was, I'm just going to make as much money as I possibly can. And I was like hell bent. Like mm -hmm. it was in my DNA. It right. was like, no matter what, like sabotage relationship, leave a big wake, doesn't matter. I'm just going to make money. Mm -hmm. And um, and that got me pretty far young. But what it also did is it, it, I built a lot of muscle that created me from having like real true depth in my relationships mm -hmm. and in my connectivity. Yep. And, um, and it was very difficult for me to like prioritize anything because everything was beyond work. Like work became before everyone and everything in my whole life mm -hmm. until about three years ago. Wow. I, and I mean, like, I, I don't even want to believe that. that. Yeah, so I had, I had a self-convincing narrative that I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, I'll tell you this right now. Like I thought I was a great dad mm -hmm. until I became dad. Like until I had L 50% of the time mm. and all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute. Okay. You weren't a great dad. You were a great provider. Oh shit. There's a big fucking difference. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a big yeah, fucking yeah. difference. Right. And, and so when you ask me like, Hey, how do you do it now? This is the reality, dude. I had to get really focused on me. Mm -hmm. I had to just really get in and dig in and start prioritizing me. Not just my outcomes, not just my output, not just the brands I'm creating, not just the exits I'm creating, not just the, the, the the value and and revenue performance and profitability and and the empire right i also found like dude i'm, I'm turning 40 
in 10 days, 11 oh, days okay. from today, I'm turning 40. Congrats, oh, I'm, man. I'm healthier physically and mentally Talk that shit. than I am at 40 than I was at 30. July 10th? 10th, baby. Oh, me too. Yeah, oh, really? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, let's, let's go. go. Yes, I, knew there was some, I knew there was something special yes, about this crew. Yes, so, dude, I, yes, you know, I realized yes, this. Like, I realized where I am in this journey. And, dude, it took me standing in that room alone. Like, it took me standing there alone going, okay, wait a minute. So, I've got... I don't know, 10 million worth of brands, mm -hmm. almost 200 team members. I can't really go out in public without somebody recognizing, yeah. you know, what's happening, mm -hmm. which I'm, I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, dude, I go home and I'm like, I'm alone. Mm. And I'm like, bro, really? Like you just spent your life to build this, to stand in a living room all by yourself? And I'm saying that that solitude isn't a good thing. I believe that we all got to be comfortable in our own skin. Yeah, absolutely. But the reality of it is, is and Christy put this right on the spot for me, because like when things were kind of you know mm -hmm. uh, in a tailspin in a sense, I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like you live in that neighborhood, <laughs> you drive that car, you have these choices. Like I send you and your friends on vacations. Like Elle has every choice that any ten year old, eight year old, five year old, six year old, twenty one year old would ever want in their of. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In their life, and she goes, yeah, but we don't have you. Mm, shit. Ooh. And she goes, so all that shit doesn't matter to me. Wow. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Em. I appreciate that. I'll go make my own car payment. I'll go make my own mortgage. I don't have you. Wow. And so you got to sit in that for a minute, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. You got to sit in that for a minute. And, and here, here's the reality. Not being a husband's not for everyone, right? Being a wife's not for everyone. Being a partner. Like, I, I, dude, trust me. I got great friends mm -hmm. and good people that it's like, dude, they're solo. They love it. Yeah. And they love that world. And, and the reality is for me, dude, I'm telling you right now, dude, that I think the cleaners, dude, the real ones, the real ones have that stability. Yeah. The real yeah. ones have that environment. The house is truly in order. Yes. Yep. Yep. And bro, I'm telling you, I thought I created some real success, but it wasn't until like the last two years and really this year that things really exploded. Like I'm talking like big deal, big deal, deal flow, bigger deals. Like just things started to happen. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, dude, is I got my house in order. Yeah. Ooh. Like I got my house in order. Yeah, because you just Talk you, you just closed a $20 million acquisition, didn't you? Yeah, there were some big ones, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah there's some big stuff a, like right on the heels of, of what I believe to be is our most successful brand. But like, so there's no question that these things started to stack up, dude. Mm -hmm. And I know that if I circle back to that right now, and, and I know this is a long answer to your show. No, I question, love it. No, this is, but this it's, is what it's I like want. If I pull it back, I had to get really clear on me, dude. Mm -hmm. I had to rework my value. Did you do I, that yourself? Dude, I, well, I, I started that okay. on my own. But I'll tell you, dude, is I, I had some real thought partners, some great friends and mentors that held me accountable, that called me on my shit. Dude, that walked with me, that like really helped me see it, see like a new depth and appreciation, mm, yeah. but also recognize where I'm being a fuck up. Mm -hmm. Like recognizing where I'm not paying attention. My, my, like my eye and hand is off the will, right? You're focusing too much energy on things that aren't important. And one of the things that they told me most, the people that were closest to me, like, dude, you, you don't prioritize you. Mm. Like all you're doing is you're like, you prioritize deal flow. Like you're, you're just committed to the hustle. The reality is, dude, it's in my DNA. Yeah. Like my work ethic has been here since I was probably 10 years yep. old. It's not going anywhere. Whether that's from professional sports to brand building, dude, mm -hmm. or wiping to up. Dude, I bring that heat into everything that I do. And it's just who I am. I don't know any different. Mm -hmm. But dude, when I really started to channel that energy and got started getting straight here, started, started telling myself the truth. Mm -hmm. Started like really looking at the mirror and not like paying attention to the self-convincing narrative that I had crafted for so long <laughs> that I started to truly believe my own story, but that I actually got real with him. I got real. I was like, M, you know, like look at myself in the mirror yeah. and go, dude, do I fucking love that guy? Mm. Right? Like, do I love that guy? That's a do hard, I have issues a, in there? That's a hard question. And bro, the reality is like, dude, you can't love anyone until you love you. That's a fact. But you can't take care of anyone until you take care of you. That's a fact. Like you can't, dude, you can't be a great dad, dude. So you're a great father of your own kingdom, like straight up. And so that was it, dude. Like when I started to prioritize my health, mm -hmm. when I started to like tell myself the truth, <laughs> when I started to like prioritize my mental and, and physical well-being, bro, like right now, dude, yeah, maybe I was like skinny fat when I was 30, dude. But right now it's like, dude, I can fucking run. <laughs> bro, way, I see you. I can you. run way further. I see you I can on the ground. way more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, I sleep way better. I can go way harder. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, dude, listen, 30-year-old me, dude, you just got your ass kicked yep. <laughs> by the veteran, dude. Mm -hmm. Like the veteran is faster than you and smarter than you. And at 30, bro, I'm telling you guys right now, if I sat down here at 30, dude, the first thing I'd be teaching you guys how to do is make a million bucks. 
because I didn't care about anything else, mm -hmm. like nothing else. Yeah. Yep. Right? But I sit down now, have a rich conversation with guys that I want, like, dude, great guys need to duplicate in their fucking likeness. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it starts I by agree. having great guys hold each other accountable. Yes. Yes. Right. Yep. So that was the big one. The next one, dude, is, and this is the one that really fucks you up, really fucks you up, but like really doing your value work. Like, yes. what do yes. I value? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, what am I manifesting? Yeah. Bro, like, dude, we have a common friend, right? She's been on your show. Mm -hmm. And dude, like creating a, a friendship with her yeah. and understanding the dynamics of the work that she had done yeah. and how she just truly created space for her own emotion, for her own feel, for her own reality. Mm -hmm. Bro, I learned so much from that connectivity. Yeah. From like that experience and that friendship taught me so much about the inner self. Yeah. Shout out, shout out Darcy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to Darcy for yeah. sure. But that was a, a reality, like seeing that type of, mm -hmm. of connection and obviously all friendship, but just being able to like see someone that brought that level of intention to their own self work. Mm -hmm. It was a big part for me, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm just saying like you you manifest these relationships. Yeah. Yeah. And so that value work was a big one. Like that was a big one because bro, I'm telling you, as simple as it may sound or as complex as it may be, I just never did it. Yeah. yeah. I was dead. I was hell bent on earn as much money as possible to have as many choices as possible. Wow. It wasn't like who I truly wanted to be. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so I got really good at who I thought I wanted to be mm -hmm. or who I had convinced myself to be. So that value work was a big one, bro. And then the next one was just like, dude, fuck, man. Like, I love being in love. Yeah. Like, I fucking love how that feels. Yeah. You, you heard of Giveon? Yeah. The, the singer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. just he, he said the same shit. Because yeah. I was wondering, I'm like, why is this Negro singing about the same girl <laughs> for the last four <laughs> albums? And he's like, and then finally it made sense. He's like, I just am Yo, a lover. Listen, he needs another one. For he's that. like, yeah. he's like, I just love being in love. The same shit yeah, that you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, now it makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, well, well dude, I've always said like, dude, I'm a lover. I'm a, I'm a Thank lover, you, dude. Appreciate you. Not just like, listen, bro. Lovers are fighters, bro. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and like, listen, dude, I can fucking carry my own too. Like I, this, I know this pretty ass yeah, face, yeah, dude. Yeah. And the shit going on, dude. Like I let people know, like, dude, don't let this, don't let this kindness, dude. Like, listen, dude, don't, don't mistake yeah. my kindness for weakness, yep. bro. Like I'm, a, I'm the scariest motherfucker here. Talk and that I know shit. you guys get down. Let's go. But I tell people all the time, like, listen, dude, this pretty motherfucker gets down. Yeah. And my boys know. Mm -hmm. The real ones know. Yeah. And you also like, by the way, you can tell like a dude who walks in. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, they yeah, like, listen, yeah. bro, he can handle himself. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that like, like so I tell people, I tell the young kids, he's like, bro, you've never had your ass kicked. <laughs> That's why you talk so much shit. Like yeah, you've never you been fucked it. up. Yeah, you need that. Like, you've never <laughs> actually like I, I tell people from time to time, like, listen, there's a couple of dudes, and I'll just like I'm kicking it out. Like you yeah. can say it the way it is. Mm -hmm. I've said this on a podcast before there's a couple dudes in my life right like i don't hold like grudges yeah but there's a couple dudes like you you have like guys like you have to get punched in the face yeah, yeah. absolutely that's a, that's yeah. A there's fact. a couple dudes no matter what yeah. no matter where i am at whatever point dude i'll pay the fine i'll deal with it i'll <laughs> smile while i punch this motherfucker like there's a couple dudes <laughs> that deserve to get punched in the face no i love that you know because it keeps people from talking shit that's hey, a part, fact part of our brand londo what do we call ourselves <laughs> petty boys <The> petty boys <laughs> and what's what's our definition of being petty Intellectual inconsistency. So yes. don't be a dumbass like yes. what Mr. McHenry's over here <laughs> talking like about, man. Otherwise you get punched. <laughs> otherwise you get punched. Yeah. Right? And so it's just like, I feel like, dude, society got a little soft, right? Yeah. yeah. But all of a sudden we like, and dude, this is like, I don't want to go well, too deep. In well, the no, thing. stop yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. You, you're on to something because Yo. you said <laughs> at 15, you had it in your head. You want to just make as much money as you can, right? 100%. Yeah. I'll be 40 in November. Yeah. I started working at 14. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Millennials, you know, 80s, 90s, right, yeah. we're- We're like the old millennial yeah, kids though. Yeah, like we're, we're right on the cusp, yeah. right? We're forced to mature a little bit faster. Yeah. And unfortunately that's cusp. not happening anymore. It wasn't a little bit faster, bro. A lot faster, Like yeah, it was like, yeah. do we, and we put a shovel in the dirt. Yeah. Right, it was like, like if you wanted that for you, you, need to go out and you get had it. to go out and get it, yeah. right? And, and, and now like there's this idea to go out and get it, mm -hmm. right? But I see like one, one common thread that I've seen over the last 20 years is people forgot how to work. Oh yeah. Like that's common, dude. That's when I was fact. a kid, dude, growing up, it's like, it's why my daughter laces up twice a week right now. Mm -hmm. I remember last year I'm driving her to work, right? We're going together. We're talking about setting our intent for the day, the things mm -hmm. that we're going to do. Love I've that. always had that, mm -hmm. right? I've always had that work ethic with her, no matter what. And I feel like that was even being a good provider too. Cause I was just like, you know, wanting to encourage her, but selfishly, it was just like, I was bringing her with me for my day. Yeah. yeah. Right. So there was like this fruitful byproduct of her learning how to work mm -hmm. when me going like, I'm just bringing you to the office. Yeah. But now it's like setting that intent. And she said to me last year, she goes, dad, none of my friends are working. I go, well, they should. Yeah. <laughs> Let Absolutely. them know. Like, Absolutely. I'm going to start you at seven bucks an hour. We yep. can talk about getting to eight, <laughs> nine, 10. It's based on performance, but your friends should be, I your friends that. should be going yeah. to work. Yeah. And I agree, dude. Like there's, um, there's something to be said about that. And mm -hmm. even when I looked at, dude, like when I was in high school, bro, like 
dude, I even look at the football team, bro. Those boys were big. Big. Like, mm-hmm. we were fucking, we were men. Yeah. Right? And I'm taking it away from, like, boys today, but it's just like, dude, the society has gotten soft. Yeah. Society's gotten soft. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's why I think that, that people get a little too loose-lipped. Mm-hmm. That's why I think that people, you know, there's so much entitlement, mm-hmm. right? Like, we went from being, like, uh, committed and empowered mm-hmm. to complacent and mm-hmm. entitled, mm-hmm. Yeah, right? And and that has had a big shift. Like you know, you look at like the the labor shortages, right? Yeah. It's because it's not because there's lack of employees. Most it's because people want to work. work. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, and society has enabled them to sit home. Yeah. Well, you talk about the hustle. You talk yeah. about having that in your DNA. People don't understand mm. what that actually means. So when you break it down, based off of yeah. some of the research I've done, yeah. You basically opened almost two restaurants per year of your life. More than, yeah. That's insane. <laughs> That's per your life. And yeah. if you're just starting at 15, 16, yeah. getting in that mindset, it condenses that even more. That's a different type of hustle. And that's that's where that like, listen, dude, the light's always on. All right. Like I'll tell you right now, dude, I, I, I can promise you right now there's some PTSD associated with working me in years prior. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I, I get it. dude. Yeah. I get the association. I get my pressure. I get that I'm unique. I let people know, like, dude, I'm the first one to high five you, encourage you, resource you, promote you, Talk this reward shit. you yeah. and never lay off the fucking gas ever. Like I, I go like, listen, dude, my, my commitment to you comes with pressure. Yep. And it's and I and I own that. Like I own it openly. Like yeah. people, if people work for me and they're in my circle, dude. If you're in my tribe, my direct tribe, which means I lead and resource you directly, not indirectly. Yep. If I lead and resource you directly, you're only there because you really get it. Yeah. Because you really want it. Because, dude, if you're just clocking in, clocking out, if this is a job for you, dude, you'll spin right out because it's too hard. Yeah. yeah it's too much. But if you're here to go, like, listen, I have a chance to change my life. I have a chance to change my life. My gal that runs the floor here, right? Uh, sorry, yeah, mom. yeah, yeah. Tiffany. Yeah, she been with you day yeah. one. Day one. She was the I, first gal I hired. I I helped her at Express um, yeah. when she bought her first two pairs of slacks. Yeah. She yeah. was like, I don't even own fucking slacks. Yeah. We opened this yeah. week. Yeah. I'm oh, like, oh shit. I love that, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. Dude, so when I, by the way, first gal I hired mm-hmm. and she courted me on Instagram. She's like, yo, am I CUTs in this stuff? I don't actually know you know you. Like we have friends and association, <laughs> but I'm going to work for you. Oh, and that was like every month, she just sent me a DM. I'm going to work for you. I'm going to work for you. Let me know when to quit my job. Let me know when to get started. Let me make this thing happen. And dude, she tra- she started here as a lead server. Wow. Dude, and 12 months later, dude, she's running a $5 million business, making over 100000 a year. Let's go. Right back. Now, let me tell you right now, she has the hardest job oh, yeah, I'm in sure, the yeah. building. Yeah. I promise you right now that there's mornings. I'm not saying I'm proud of it. It's just I know the reality. There's more mornings, dude, that I promise you she cries in the shower. Not because of how she's treated, mm-hmm. because of her responsibility. That's yeah. Because lot. she's pulling herself out of a comfort zone. But mm-hmm. right now, dude, she's pulling her own chair up. It's Sunday dinner with her family, dude. She's owning her shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She sits at the table and goes, I own me. Yeah. Like, I got this. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm doing me. Right? And when you go from a server to making six figures in 12 months, you're fucking hustling. Yep. You're hustling. And you're working with the group that provided hey, a roadmap hey, hey, for you to come out and execute. What do you say? Earned. Earned, baby. Not given. Like, and and people, they, that, that's just not like some pithy like tag phrase. Like that's a fucking reminder. Mm-hmm. When I talk about lacing up for your potential, I'm telling you right now, it took me, <laughs> I'm looking down at these J's, right? Because I'm like, well, fuck, dude, these are crazy. <laughs> but I look down at these J's right now and I go like, I, they weren't, J's weren't a choice for me when I was a kid. Nope. But I looked at them mm-hmm. just like I looked at the family in the boat, dude. Just like I, I looked at the BMW, right? Just like I looked at that. When like, how do they live like that? Or that, or, or that nice watch you got on? Totally, right? Or you, yeah, exactly. Like showing that we appreciate time mm-hmm. no, and you're willing no to way. invest in it, right? Yes, but you look at like whether that be a great watch, a, a boat, a pair of Nikes, or a pair of Jays, whatever that might be. And I looked at them, dude. I started buying Jordans in my late twenties. Mm. I didn't lace up my first pair of Jordans till I was 35. To wear? To actually to wear. wear? Oh, shit. Bro, because I had put so much stuff. in it. That shit was just it. like a trophy. So much, dude, when I put it up, it was like, dude, I'm fucking crying like a baby, dude. I'm lacing up my fucking first pair. And bro, the first time I wore a pair of J's, I owned over 70. Damn. I oh, put damn. so much stock into it, right? Damn. I put so much stock into yeah. it. So you talk about like lacing up for potential. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, I had put so much stock in. Dude, I remember when the grapes came out, dude. Mm-hmm. I was in, I was in, uh, I was in uh, fifth grade. 
when the grapes dropped. And I was like, fuck, I need those. And I, dude, I don't know how I grew up in the neighborhood I grew up in because I had no business, dude, going to school in East Sandy. Like no business. <laughs> like I, we had no business what, living in that neighborhood. What school was that? I went to Peruvian Park. Oh, shit. Elementary school. Is that still school. around? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but it's like, it's like tucked in off the 80th South mm -hmm. and like 15th East, bro. I'm like, dude, I, I don't know why we ended up there. Yeah. The so, reality is. But so like, back in the day, that was all fields, I heard, right? Totally. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, well, basically from 10th East to 13th, it yeah. was all fields. That's what I heard. Yeah. yeah like was, farmland. A lot of like agriculture and mm -hmm. shit was going on through there. And so, dude, but understanding that journey and that lace up and getting after it, like I have that like, oftentimes what you see in my stories is just me journaling. Mm. Because when I kick out like lace up for your potential, mm -hmm. I can't be fucking sitting on the couch eating potato chips yeah. <laughs> or being a shitty ass dad, dude, or not showing up for my family or not showing up for my team, right? One of my big things here, I get I get updates on our performance daily. Mm -hmm. And each morning I get goals from the teams. It seems like a little bit of like micromanage, but the reality is it's just aligning and setting up yeah, for success. Yeah, mm -hmm. But Absolutely. I get that. And it's like, yo, listen, like our goal today is 230 covers. Yeah. I'm like, yo, it's 400. You can't win right? unless you we're don't going score. Here, we're going there. It's like, we're going to 400. And by the way, I'll see you soon. It's not like, oh, hey, go get 400. Good luck. Yeah. I'm going to go fucking surf behind my boat. Mm -hmm. It's like, yo, listen, we're going to get to 400. I'm on my way. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I'm on my way. Yeah. And so oftentimes when I talk about lacing up, dude, when I talk about earned, I'm also reminding me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, M, listen, today you got to fucking earn it. Yeah. Right? You might be comfortable in this acquisition. You might get comfortable in these big wins. You might start stacking it. And what's kind of interesting, I think, for the hustlers, dude, and I think the guys that I think were a common thread in this is that it emboldens me. The more I win, dude, the more I want to win. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The more money I make, dude, the more money I want to make. Because, dude, I've realized that the more money I make, the more I can help people. Yeah. And and that's- Money that's is a facilitator. Like, like this platform. Yeah. Right? Like I open up with like, dude, here's a nugget. If you're listening, you own a business, do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. do this. And, and the interesting thing for me was when I got that big win, like when you talk about like hitting the, a deal mm -hmm. that's like eight figures deep. Yeah. That just hits different. Oh yeah. You're like, wait a minute. Like, yeah, keep going, like keep you know, like, yeah. like that just, that just hits different. Oh yeah. And, and bro, some people go like, well, dude, I'm going to take my, my take of that or my opportunity of that. And, and then I'm going to the something. beach. Yeah. I'm going to go do yeah. this. And bro, I like, I doubled down. I'm, I'm going to build a new brand. Yep. I'm going to open up a 4,500 square foot restaurant in the end of the pandemic and no one's developing something this size. Yeah. Like there was just something in me that went like, listen, dude, if I can fucking do it, if I can do it, bro, I know damn well you can do it, bro. Like I, look, my first business, dude, I mowed some lawns, but I kind of like creatively, that was like my side <laughs> business, bro, I sold cigarettes. <laughs> Right? Like I'm that kid, dude. I was in a tagging crew. I got kicked out of Wait, junior high What did you call school. those like, cigarettes? The uh, cowboy killers? Cowboy killers, <laughs> baby. Have you heard this already? Hell yes. Yeah, but it's like, dude, hell yeah. You did your homework. Yeah, man, come on, man. But I was like, dude, listen, like, could you imagine what it would be like right now, dude, if you're a fucking sixth grader going to a Metro Mart and buying cartons of cigarettes? Oh, yeah, going by the way, them. that dude, whoever you bought it from would go to prison. The cancel culture would shut that place down. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, listen, bro, you groomed me to open two restaurants a year for the, you know, like, however you made that reference when I thought Hustling, it was really good. Bro, bro yeah. that, like, that, I'm not saying that dude saw an opportunity. He just saw the opportunity. That I, he'd give me a carton of cigarettes and I'd give him 10 bucks. Yeah. yeah. And I sold them for two to $3 a piece in 96. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Right? No, I, I get it. I was the kid uh, selling moon dust. What's that? Where they'd mix uh, crushed up Smarties and mm -hmm. um, uh, pixie sticks and all that yeah. in bags. I was in elementary school with a backpack full of these Ziploc baggies. Well, that's like that a I new was, definition on the yeah. angle dust. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was <laughs> hustling that shit out. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. my, my mom got called by the school. They're like, you know what your son's doing? She's like, yeah, he's a hustler. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, y'all remember basketball do. cards? <laughs> yeah. Remember the, sure. the monthly Beckett? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, dude, for sure. I was getting over tenfold on my neighborhood. There you go. See? I was like, y'all give you this Patrick time. Ewing hologram for that Larry Johnson rookie. Okay. Woo -woo. Take it to the car shop. I want to turn this in and uh, don't give me any money. Give me the whole box of Fleer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ultra. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah, no, get listen, like, yeah. Everyone's got to move, but like that spirit, I want to encourage. I'm not saying I'm going to encourage the behavior of going out and sell cigarettes. I'm mm -hmm. encouraging the savior of teaching, or I'm going to encourage the behavior of teaching you how to sell mm -hmm. when you're 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When you're 11 years old, when you're 12 years old. Cause you, I don't care if you're like trying to sell whatever that might be. You're selling leadership or you're selling vision. Mm -hmm. You're selling product. Yeah. Bro, you're selling essence. Something. Right? An you're idea. selling whatever that might yeah. be. But like kids, we have to learn that. 
Oh yeah. Like we have to share that, right? Like one of the biggest blessings in my life, dude, was the fact that like early in my like adolescence, right? Bowling was my sport. You know, some of this background, I'm sure. But dude, I didn't even realize like the gift it was when I had like a, like a top performing used car salesman teaching me how to sell bowling balls and bowling shoes when I was 13 years old, bro. But dude, like, you don't even know that, yeah, right? Yeah. You got a professional salesman teaching you mm-hmm. how to sell shoes, mm-hmm. right? How can you look down at a shoe and go like what your size is, right? I learned that shit when I was like 13 or 14. Yeah. It's just, it's interesting stuff. And um, that's a skill set, man. Oh yeah. Know? Like the hustle is a skill set. Yeah, definitely. Um, question yeah um you were really active on socials during the pandemic Yo. like day one week one um what was it called the, around, the hunger man. the hunger the healthy, initiative yeah the healthy and full okay so you how number one two-part question how many how many um uh workers did you feed per day and were you making any money from that yeah hell yes okay so so um dude this is what's wild <laughs> I'm just chopping it all up right now. <laughs> uh, dude, I had a sense of calm, calmness from day one. Mm. I felt a stewardship and a responsibility to show up for my community because I felt like I was good. Yeah. And bro, I'm telling you right now. And like you didn't downtown, close down, right? Never. Okay. I never, none of the restaurants closed. Didn't lay my team off. Like anyone who wanted to work, dude, I put them to work. Right. Not everyone wanted to. Okay. Right. And I understand and I respect yeah. that. Um, there was a lot of unknowns. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. For sure. But it was like I was probably one of the only restaurant groups hiring during the pandemic, putting Damn. people to work that needed it, opening up pantries, dude. I mean, bro, I had pantries in, in downtown Salt Lake City. My partners and I, dude, if you needed sugar, flour, toilet paper, water, yeah. whatever it might be, just come in, dude. We got you. Yeah. Yeah. There you told me. You're like, let me, let me know yeah. if your family needs totally, anything. Like, yeah. like, it was just like there was a neighborhood pantry going on. But um, it was one of my partners called me. He's like, Em, I know we can do something. Right. And he was a, he was an investment partner at the time. Really good dude. Mark mm-hmm. Selman, really fucking eccentric dude. Um, but he said, dude, am I know there's something we can do. Right. And we just start brainstorming and dude, to be like real, like it was like boomstick. We drink and we're on this buzz. Next thing you know, we come up with this initiative. Mm-hmm. And um, so dude, I took the phone. I turned it around. I'm like, yo, listen, like I got, I have a responsibility to keep food on the table for this team. Right. And I believe I have a responsibility to, to help. Uh, reward those on the front lines during this chaos. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I think I have a responsibility with my network that I know that there's some of you out here that can afford to sponsor this. I remember that. So we say like, Hey, was this a, was this a discount? No, baby. Like I'm putting chefs and kitchen teams to work. My responsibility, my goal was when she's up there at the university of Utah quarantined because Mm -hmm. you know, for months they weren't getting to their families. Dude, they're sleeping in tents, sleeping in their cars. Dude, it was hell. Why? Why? Because the unknowns, the solve to their unknowns were more labor and more quarantine. And so instead of, you know, Julie making the name up, but Julie's working a 24 hour swing shift, she gets off, dude, she have like a crusty, like croissant and a, and a string cheese and maybe like a, a, a soft apple. I'm like, fuck that, dude. We're <laughs> going to have a chef made meal. Yeah. And so it was a win, win, win. Mm-hmm. What it did is it provided me an opportunity to keep our teams and local businesses engaged and employed. Mm-hmm. So it kept food on their table. It provided me an opportunity in the neighborhood to highlight an individual or a business that could sponsor that day. Mm-hmm. It started with like mills, mm-hmm. then it went to days, then it went to weeks. And pretty soon it was like, then they were flexing. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I'm here for it. And then in turn, what it did is it put this great mill in the hands of our frontline heroes that are out there risking it all during these times that were unknown. Mm-hmm. And bro, every one of these mills, not only were they delicious and well curated, but there was there was positive messages. Like, dude, listen, we're watching you. Mm-hmm. Like, we see you, we appreciate mm-hmm. you. Like. You are, you are loved. You are honored. You are cared for. Like we're putting these oh. personalized notes on it. So you asked me like, well, how did that rev up? Well, dude, it was like, first one was like, um, my goal was like, let's do a lunch. Let's do a dinner. Mm-hmm. It was like, if I can get 25 meals, you know, for lunch and, and 50 meals for dinner, then I can keep this team employed. And I'm like, well, dude, I had my fold of restaurants at the mm-hmm. time. And then pretty soon I'm grabbing other restaurants in the neighborhood. Oh, wow. I'm putting my arms oh, around yeah. them. I'm like, listen, dude, we may be competing in the in the business for a similar demographic. Yeah. But bro, listen, We're all in like, this, this is our neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, we walk the same sidewalks. Mm-hmm. Like we love the same people. We chose to live here for a reason. We're going to put each other on our back. And I knew, dude, that I could carry some big weight. I knew that I could really like – there was something that told me like yeah. for a long time, dude, you were built for battle. The yeah. pandemic proved I'm like, I'm, I'm war ready. Yeah. I'm war ready. And so, uh, dude, at the end, <laughs> I think like by week, I should say by the, the end, by like week six, week eight, we were up to like two to 3,000 meals a week. Wow. And it was like, bro, and I'm curating. Like, dude, I'm running a logistics business. I'm feeling like fucking Amazon, dude. I'm delivering, <laughs> dude. I've got cars going in. Dude, there was times down, downtown, no, this is no bullshit, on Broadway and State Street, the, the street light was flashing because there's no traffic. 
Shit. There was literally – there was about a week period downtown where Ginger Street was the only thing yeah. open. And at the time, I had like a Denali, and my Denali was on the sidewalk, bro, next to the front door. Damn. No one said shit because no one was down there. No one was down there. It was yeah, like the apocalypse, crazy. dude. <laughs> like for real. And dude, here I'm, I'm fucking just writing – hand. dude, if you ordered from me back then, bro, I'm writing you a fucking handwritten note on a napkin. Wow. Bro, th- th- this wasn't that long ago, right? This is two years yeah, ago. Yeah. yeah. Bro, two years ago, bro, I'm sleeping in the dining room. Me. Golly. I'm sleeping in the dining room, bro, delivering meals, bro, keeping my team fed. Damn. And proving to my family, dude. I'm doing 75 hard at the same time. Oh, shit. Because I want, like, dude, I was, uh, this is what I wanted, dude, with L, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted L to be like, you know, during the pandemic, like, you know, people running for the hills, they're fearing good, known or unknown. I don't yeah. do, whatever, however you felt, bro, that's on you. Mm-hmm. I don't judge that. Yeah. But what I wanted my legacy to be was that my dad got in his best shape. Mm. He showed up every single day. Yep. He kept people employed and he fucking delivered meals to people that needed them the most. Yeah. And I fucking proved that to me and myself and my family every single day. And so, dude, I believe that the pandemic is how we yielded those results that quickly followed. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like, like I, I launched Dirty Bird six weeks pre-pandemic, right? And at the end of the pandemic, we sold it. Shit. And you, you got a new one in August, 20 right? months. Yeah. Yeah, 20 months. Yeah, there's eight under development right okay. now. Just opened Centerville last week. Okay. Yeah, and um, and dude, that that crew, dude, they're gonna run it to the moon, man. <laughs> like they're fucking. They're, you want to talk about tenacious, man? Mm-hmm. That that whole group over there, balls or not, dude, they're all brass. Like those guys are just like they're fucking all gas, no break. And listen, dude, if you're gonna build a brand and sell it to someone, sell it to guys like that. Yeah, that just like they're literally balls out. Mm-hmm. A lot of respect for those guys in that way for sure. And so, um, dude, the pandemic really changed me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Change me, bro. I think it it definitely brought out um I took full advantage of it. Um yeah. I was not, I was not <laughs> sure. working. I was yeah. bugging him like him yeah. and Miguel are well, it's kind of like, you got this off the ground, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like yeah. I was looking at different ways to edit, how to cut my time down with mm-hmm. editing, different ways to film. Sure. I was always people the, got sharper. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. oh yeah. 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 Some yeah. some people became complacent, got lazier, but dude, the hustlers. I was still working, better, bro. bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was they still working. Better. We were yeah. we were talking, trying to figure this out. He yeah. was they got better. Putting his time in. And I was like, shit. And that's bro. when your company was still like early startup, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like that's when you're like, dude, it went after it, man. It it's uh Bro, it it just it just leveled me up, bro. Yeah, yeah. It leveled me up. I was like, oh fuck, okay. Yeah. Like I, you 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 think what you're capable of till yeah. you're put into a situation where where you're challenged to truly show yeah. the fuck. Yeah. Well, and like like I told you before we yeah. started filming, you were one of the first um, followers yeah. that came that I didn't have any like relationships with, and yeah. I'm like, oh, he probably came from Darcy because we yeah, yeah, started yeah, getting sure, yeah. you know random followers, and then you know we would send a DM here and there, yeah. and then yeah. when you did your initiative, I would always be like, man, I keep hustling, yeah. I, I, yeah, appreciate I appreciate the hustle, that, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And then um, we stepped into Ginger Street, yeah. I'll never yeah. forget, <laughs> and right I, before Christmas, yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. I sent you, I just yeah, sent you a video yeah, like, yeah, hey, we're yeah. checking out your establishment. Yep. Two minutes later, how do you know Mr. McHenry? I'm like. Oh, I just <laughs> know him from Instagram. She was like, uh, well, I hope you have an appetite. Man, just started just bringing shit. Yeah, 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 man. Listen. So we appreciate that, yeah, man. Appreciate sure. the listen, love. Listen, dude, you, just, and, you take yeah. care of the people that take care of you. And I say all this to say um, you're you're big on community outreach, Thanks. like yes. you just spoke about, Thank you. and the neighborhood. Yo. You know what I mean? So where, where does that come from? Because I grew up in Rose Park. So. Hell yeah. We would, same thing. We would drive past here. And my parents had the similar mindset of your parents, probably yeah. like, oh, that's where the rich people live. Yeah. Come to find out, here's here's a kid in Sandy that was was struggling, you know, no. middle class or below middle class, right? Yep. Dude, no doubt. Yeah. No so doubt. it's like, you know, my perception of people that live in Sandy, um, that was it, right? Yeah. yeah. Now you I arrived. Live, now I live you, in yeah, I live yeah. in Sandy, and I start I get some of those comments from my sure. people back home, sure. right? Like, oh, you live in Sandy? <laughs> you're, like, I mean, you're a sellout, bro. You're a sellout. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're a sellout. You yeah. know. No, but like, you. I'm like Jay, though. Street side can't go back home. You know when I heard that when I was back home. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I frequent in Rose Park still. I, I I reach out to those guys. There's a lot of um, up and coming rappers from the neighborhood that are also doing very well. Yes. You know for themselves. Shout out to the Moon Gang, Bobby B Mac, and all of them. Um, but let me answer this for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me answer this. For it, it's a it's a deep one for me too mm-hmm. bro because uh those are your people yeah dude like your your community is your community yeah. right that's your yeah. neighborhood i'm actually not the neighbor dude that's like knows everyone that, right like, yeah i'm not hanging out and barbecuing bro <laughs> yeah. listen dude i'm hustling mm-hmm. bro i'm building shit right but i most definitely know my neighborhood uh 
Are you, you still know, in Sandy? I'm still, no, I'm not in Sandy. Okay. No, okay. Longer. no, but I, but I brought like one of my favorite brands back to my own, you know, mm -hmm. my own neighborhood. Yeah. No, I'm i uh, I'm in the holiday Mill Creek gotcha. area. Okay. Um, but why, when you ask me like, dude, why are you for the neighborhood? Like, mm -hmm. why are you about the neighborhood? And the reality is, dude, the neighborhood I've always felt like gave me a sense of stability. Mm. Like it always believed in me. Yeah. It believed in me when I didn't know it believed in me. Like, you know, like your childhood friendships, dude, like the neighbor that doesn't realize that like that meal that you had at their house was like, you fucking didn't know where you were going to have dinner, yeah. bro. And that was me. Like there were times like, like, dude, my fam, my parents, bro, they, for, for what they knew and what they did do, they did a really good job. Yeah. Yeah. But I can sure. tell you right now, dude, my dad was a single dad you know, of two dude, like he's got a third grader and a ninth grader and like, that's big shit, dude, yeah. you know, and he's dealing with, with divorce and dealing with this stuff. Like, dude, there was just times where it's like, bro, like family gets distracted, responsibilities and mm -hmm. things that are going on. And so, uh, dude, my neighborhood showed up for me in ways I didn't even realize. Mm -hmm. Wow. Directly and indirectly. And then when I got to a place that I could show up for a neighborhood and not just for myself, mm -hmm. but for my own family, I can't do it any other way. Yeah. And so like I tell people oftentimes, dude, everyone wants, wants to talk about like local, mm -hmm. right? They're like, oh, source local, be local, buy local, you know, entertain local. And there's just people that just are, right? And that's just me. Like, dude, I buy in my neighborhood. I know in my neighborhood. I say hi to the people in my yeah. neighborhood. Like I, I make myself approachable for that reason. I believe I have the personal brand that I do, mm -hmm. the quality of my personal brand because I make myself approachable. Right, like, dude, I walk into Vivint, mm -hmm. and I and I say this not to stroke myself or, or like no, but ego, you you love the jazz, but like, dude, I love the yeah, jazz. Yeah. But when I walk into the Vivint, dude, I feel like one of them. Hey, <laughs> like I do, right? Yeah. Because I get that respect. Yeah. Because I'm good to people, bro. I get people call me out or they'll post me. I see they'll that. Yeah. Me on the road, mm -hmm. they'll be like, dude, you know, like I I aspire to be an entrepreneur like Michael who puts his arm around everyone. Yeah. Who encourages people, and at the same time, like, listen, dude, I don't fuck with information zombies yeah right if i dm you back and we dm back and forth mm -hmm. that means i actually believe in you yeah right right there's a lot of information zombies there's a lot of people out there mm -hmm. that oh, try yeah. to be time wasters that try to be anchors in jam sports i'm not here for that dude i don't <laughs> carry back jazz force like listen i don't i don't fuck with that dude like I, i'm here to lace up for my own good i love that um, but if Bars. you're here to get yeah, like but if you're here to get after it yeah then i'm here with you i love that and um and so when i Use an example like that, dude, whether it's like getting on the Megatron, dude, or like, mm -hmm. you know, JC's got his arm around your 11 yeah. year old and they're coming out of the tunnel together. Yeah. You know, it's like, dude, I haven't been a season ticket holder till last year. Wow. I haven't been following the jazz my whole life. Mm -hmm. Right. Those boys just started showing up. Talk to, like they started talk showing up and I'm like, wait, what, yeah. wait a minute, dude, you guys are just like sitting at my <clears throat> tables and I don't fucking go to the game. Yeah. So then of course, you know, then I like biasly had to get row two tickets and you know, sit in section two and, and hold it down, baby. You know, but and by the way, I earned that shit. And uh talk to him. But you, you know, you sit there and everyone's humanizing, right? Yeah. So dude, it's like, listen, I don't care if you're the kid that that like lefty and I who's from Rose Park that mm -hmm. owns Wimpen Friends yeah, yeah. and our kick it forward initiative that he invited me into, he's from the park as well. Mm -hmm. Whether that be like we're helping that Title One kid with his first pair of shoes to help him lace up to his potential, mm -hmm. right? Like really helping lace up the future leaders of our community, dude. Or or you're the darling of the neighborhood, bro, and you're Donovan, yeah. right? Or yeah. you're, mm -hmm. you're JC, right? Like talk about a dude who should be on this podcast, yeah, bro, who needs to get on here and chop it up because mm -hmm. he's real, yeah. Dude comes in, he's cool as fuck to everyone all the time, and and I think because he makes himself so approachable, people don't fuck. He was just at a in a in a, uh, a uh, yeah that, water balloon fight yeah. in New York, <laughs> dude, <laughs> bro. And then like the next day, he's like in L.A. with yeah. LeBron. Yeah, like the dude just like he he's and dude from day one, bro. He's just like he singled me out. I was in the dining room one day, mm -hmm. right, and he walked up to me and was like, "Yo, you you Michael?" I'm like, "Yeah." Like you know, I was like, I rolled with him. Like, dude, so you're you're Clark's. Uh, Jordan, Jordan, Clarkson, yeah. you know, I fucked yeah. with them for a second. But I was like, oh, what's up, JC? And he was just like, yo, it sounds like my people are in touch with your people. I'm going to be having a party here. I'm like, hell yeah. I appreciate that. That's mm -hmm. like how we met. Oh, wow. Like he was just a customer, mm -hmm. right? I didn't even watch him ball yet. Wow. Right. And then it was like the week I met him, it was like the very next day or the day following my good, my good friend, Kyle Nelson, the great elbow, which you guys probably know. Him. Uh, he's the NBA elf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really good dude. He takes me like to the last like preseason game. Right. And he's row one. Right, section two. 
And I'm there, bro. And I'm just like, fuck it, dude. I got, I got to be in on this. <laughs> and so, dude, next thing you know, man, by the time the season started, like for a crazy reason, pandemic and others, someone gave up their seats on that row and I bought them. We snatched them up, dude. I'll never let them go. Hell yeah. But my whole point with that is like, dude, I don't care if you are the kid, dude, who's aspiring to be someone. Mm-hmm. Dude, if you're that single mom who's just hustling, that messages me, mm. that's given up, right? I had a gal this week message me, dude, she's a photographer. Mm-hmm. Looks like she's a mom of three, right? Seems to be a single mom. I don't know much of her detail, yeah. but she just like, she sends me a message. She's like, yo, have you been at this point where you're just broken down? Like you just like, yeah. you're about to lose everything. You've got nothing left. You can barely pick yourself up off the ground. I wrote back, I'm all, hell yes. And you're supposed to be here. And here's why. Mm. And I said, are you pointed at these things? So I said, I just reminded her that where she's sitting is a space we all sit in. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. We, as entrepreneurs, yeah. as, as leaders, as fathers, as mothers, we're, we're, we're expected to be in that space mm-hmm. from time to time. So once I, I, I empathized and then I, and then I reiterated mm-hmm. and reestablished that's where you're supposed to be. Then I just asked a series of questions. Mm-hmm. I said, just go get these answers, girl, and your business will turn. Mm. But it's like, so if you're that person who gets a message to me, you get through or you're JC or whoever you are in the yeah. neighborhood or you're Tiffany yeah. or, it's, or it's you or you, whatever that might be to me, I feel like that's in my DNA, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be a bit of a hub, mm-hmm. a conduit, a connector, yeah. Yeah. you know, and I'll, and I'll probably, I'll end this thought with, I'm not in this business, dude, because I know everything about beverage, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not in this business, dude, because I know everything about beverage, dude, or that I'm I'm so passionate about cheese. You did that? Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. smooth. That was about smooth. cheese, you know? Uh, I mean, I got some style, bro. You know, oh, yeah, I got yeah, some yeah. experience yeah. in that. But, dude, I'm in this business because I want to have the biggest, most connective dining room table in every community that I love mm-hmm. and serve. That's it. I'm here. Food and beverage is the conduit to connectivity. Oh, yeah. Right. So you fact. see like our mission statement. You hear me talk about for the neighborhood, by the neighborhood. Love it. Yep. That's because I'm not a chef, bro. That's because I'm not like this aspiring culinarian. Mm-hmm. Bro, I, I fuck up the mold for restaurateurs. That's why I think I'm good at it. Yeah. Because I'm about you. Mm-hmm. I'm so fucking obsessed with you sitting at the table, having a good time. Yep. Connecting. Yeah. Dude, that essence, like that beauty. Like, dude, when I was a kid, bro, I wanted to eat out more. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid, I wanted my, I wanted to go to dinner with my family. I loved how that felt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. So creating that kind of space. And so when your mission, dude, is to have the biggest, most connective dining room table in the neighborhood, but you can't fuck that up. Like you need the neighborhood on board. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Right. If you're going to really connect people, you need to re- you need a reputation, a relationship and an involvement and a participation in that community that people can feel you. Yeah. They can feel you. Just so happens that I get to connect it with great champagne and pancakes, mm. bro, or a, or a pad thai or a hot chicken sandwich, dude, or a hot honey pepperoni, right? Or some crispy I, duck I rolls. I love what you said. You're like, I don't care if you're getting steak and eggs. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah. You named off all the yeah, foods yeah, 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 and you're yeah. like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You're here yeah. and my shit rolls. My shit That's hits. It. That's yeah. it. Like, and by the way, when you make a decision to vote, dude, I we have put in the attention that we believe that everything that's on your plate, everything that's on that table belongs. Yeah. So I don't actually don't care what you decide, mm-hmm. but what I love is the fact that you're sitting here. Yeah. What I love is that you're sitting here having a conversation with someone that's an important enough to sit at the table with you. Yeah. And that's a big fucking deal. That is. Yep. Right? That's a big deal. Yep. And I just say it this way, like, listen, dude, you got to earn it. But listen, dude, I'm making space for anybody who's willing to participate. Who's willing to participate, dude? I'm making space for you at the table. Yeah. And that could be buy a toaster strudel, dude. <laughs> buy a drip coffee. Yeah. If you want to buy like a P3 vintage, you know, 2010 dollar dollar bottles, come fucking come do that too. <laughs> like, listen, bro, I got a special space for you guys. <laughs> you want to come get a thousand dollar bottle, baby? Like, yeah. listen, I'll leave the lights on for your ass or I'll turn them <laughs> off. Right. Like, so trust me, there's levels to this game. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. There's yeah. levels to this game. But it's like, like I said, like, if, if I'm throwing an after party for you, mm-hmm. Right. Or I'm, I'm, I'm up to an exclusive, like the people that we've hosted, the A-list that we've hosted in here would blow people's minds. Yeah. But I protect that list. Yeah. Because I create that space mm-hmm. for that as well. Yep. Right. And so, uh, dude, it's, it's a fucking special place to be, man. But yeah. I'm all about neighborhood. I almost feel like it's like that. Like I've never been like a gangster. I feel like I'm gangster in some shit. For sure. Like, <laughs> listen, but it's like, you know, I, I I can understand where like some of the depth in that comes from. Yeah. Like that brotherhood, that mm-hmm. camaraderie, that like like blood in, blood out, right? Mm. Like, like understanding yep. that, American me. Right. Like <laughs> reality is I've never like truly been jumped in like that yeah. with the clock on. Yeah. Fuck it. Sometimes I might want to get a little I, angled I, up though. I watched my know? friend get jumped out of a game and yeah, that, that motherfucker but, was counting like it's one thousand one. 
1002. <laughs> well, I was like, God Real damn, they beat the shit out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Three more times. Yeah. Uh, we started over shit. I lost count. One, yeah, one, yeah. 1001. Shit, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> hold on. Let me start over again. Right. My, my watch yeah. is bad. But Londo, I felt like I stepped on some stuff that you wanted to ask or say. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. I mean, oh. you answered a lot of the questions. I think the coolest thing about it, bro, is coming where we come from. Mm. Talk about it. And understanding the level of uncertainty. Mm. The dining table mm. was where everything was okay. Mm. Even if you didn't have a lot. Safe, man. Safe. It's where everything felt good. Mm. I remember my grandma in specific. We didn't have much, but we'd be at grandma's house and my grandma was the baddest motherfucker, bro. <laughs> yep. She'd pull out an they apple. always are, bro. Listen. Pull out an apple, put it on the table. Bam! Break that shit with her fist. Yeah. And us as kids, it was the coolest shit ever. But there was like all of us there. Yeah. We're all sharing this apple and it was just a cool experience, but that's what it was, an mm. experience. Yep. Being at the table is an experience. So for you to bring that type of narrative to what you're building mm. and what you want to preach and promote, it says a lot yeah, about you. where you yeah. come from. Yeah. It's, um, dude, whether you're like, it's like the subconscious works on you, right? The subconscious works on you from time to time. And Man, I'll tell you, dude, I don't believe that we would create, we would have created the success that we've created, dude, if it was just economics, if it was yeah. just like checking boxes. That's why I build brands, baby. Brands are about people. Oh, yeah. Brands are about feelings, mm -hmm. right? It's about interpretation, right? Anyone can honestly, dude, I feel like anyone, like, dude, listen, you got Google at your hand, you got YouTube at your hand. Anyone can go build a business, yeah. resource and build a business, build a balance sheet. Like, you go out and build a business, but building a brand it's takes different. intent, dude. It's different. Building a brand takes heart. Building a brand takes, tenacity it's a lot man right it takes yeah. confidence too mm -hmm. why because you take something like brunch me hard like you put you toss that back for interpretation oh yeah right interpretation musicians like dude we, we there's a role like artists like everyone has a role and 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 kind of the script mm -hmm. you know and in in the play and when you're building brands right you're you're honestly dude you're fucking with feelings bro like real talk like you're fucking with feelings well like like you said you you guarantee she she might have cried in the shower yeah a couple oh, times God, listen bro cause, <laughs> cause, and by the way so have i yeah oh, yeah. I just, yeah we've like, all been know, there if you know what it takes yeah. uh and uh like listen dude if you built anything worth anything you've laid on the floor yeah oh yeah you fucking laid on the floor <laughs> yeah yeah but like you you've literally laid on the floor yeah. yeah right like i'm telling you right now like during the pandemic too dude like the amount of people that called me in tears losing everything and my bounce was like dude i i understand where you're coming from what are you doing mm. what are you doing like, that was like that tough love oh, yeah. yeah that tough love right it has that feeling but oftentimes like those those tear calls i got some of them just ended in tears and they didn't do anything about it. And other ones like, fuck, man, dude, that's, he's right. Let like, me get, let me what get am my I shit doing? on, yeah. Like, what am I doing? Am I, do I really want this? Because if you really want it, you got to get out there, you know, and get after it. And yeah. So I appreciate you recognizing that, dude, because to me, there's probably this sense of like, you know, now we're going super deep. You say, you know, you say whatever you want. I think honestly, dude, as a, as a kid, dude, I, I not only did I crave that money and that that opportunity, but what I don't think I realized, and, and I'm kind of connecting these dots as we talk, is that I think that I really craved the essence of my family being at the table together. Oh yeah, mm. right. Like I want my mom and my dad and my sister, you know, at the table, yeah. right? And uh, that's a big deal. Yeah, you know, that's a big. That's deal, huge. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Um, there's one other thing I want to yeah, touch please. on, and you can be as long winded as you want. Oh, shit. Um, was that like a little note? No, like, hey, no, no, this is great. No, 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 no. This is I'm great. Teasing, bro. This, this is great. Teasing, this, is what our, this, goodies, is, this is what our yeah. platform is tailored yeah. for. Um, I am a huge advocate, and I've taken it upon myself. Mm. Um, you know, Mike kind of, kind of leading the way with us. I'm a huge advocate for people coming to Utah. Okay, I don't give a fuck what color you are. Yeah, but He's but a bit liking it, pop, yeah, but liking it and knowing what shoulder, who to rub shoulders with. Yeah. Yes, and I feel like just the times I've been in here, yeah. seeing old girl from Impact Magazine, the owner. Sorry, forgive me for what's Tasha, the owner of Impact Magazine, mm. um, coming in here, yeah, yeah. brunching with someone that she brought in from out of town. You did stuff with Nikki Walker. She's a yeah. huge advocate for yeah. people yeah. coming yeah. out yeah. here and loving yeah. Utah. Yeah. And I feel like that's my calling with this platform as well. Like, no, like yeah. 
it's not just all Mormons. It's not just all white. We have a huge Latino community, sure. yep. um, Polynesians. Totally. Yep. We have we have white people that fuck with all the cultures like yeah, yourself. Totally. Yeah. But I just want to let you know and give you the flowers. Um, I don't know if you've realized it yet, but with your brands and with your businesses, you are creating that hub for people to come out here and really be like, oh, shit, I went to a day party at this brunch place yep. in Sandy, Utah. Great views and yeah. got twisted. It yeah. was only open till four. Yeah. But like, I would have <laughs> never thought. somebody banging on the, on yeah. the ones and twos. It was yeah. good. Yeah. I, yeah. Or a bet live band. Yeah. I've totally. seen you had a live yeah. band in here. But I would have never You're thought that this that would happen pop. here. But yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you've realized, you know, the impact that yeah. you've had on people that are moving here for work or for whatever yeah. reason. You know what I mean? But you are. This, this brand specifically has been a bit of the, like the accelerant, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This has been a bit of like, I'm, I'm learning that. Um, I always felt like I had this interesting dynamic. Like I've always felt like almost like a, like a hybrid, right? Yeah. Like I can come in and chop it up with you guys, be super casual. Mm -hmm. And dude, I promise you, I can lace up and sit on the board with anyone. Mm. Like yeah. I, I have that ability. I have that acumen, mm -hmm. right? I have that sophistication and experience, oh, yeah, yeah. but I also have this ability that like, I can chop it up with my servers. Mm -hmm. Like I can chop it up with my 17 year old high school kid, yeah. right? Who's like in here, like first job, you know, I can, I can create this, this, um, this presence, this relevance and, and, and we can relate. Yeah. Right. And, um, that was a big deal for me. Like, you know, here I'm like making this association with sneakers, but it's amazing. Like what sneakers, like the sneaker community has done for conversation. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like just, it, it creates this, like it drops a barrier, mm -hmm. right? Dude, I'm telling you, bro, like my suits, you'd appreciate them. You've probably seen a lot of them, mm -hmm. but like, dude, I have like a beautiful, like beautiful custom. You'd appreciate that. <laughs> right? I, have, I have beautiful threads. I wore suits. Dude, I didn't even own a pair of jeans. Tell dude, honestly, I was probably in my late twenties. Wow. Like, I, dude, still, I, wore, I still only wear like, oh, one oh, pair yeah, of yeah, jeans. Right? <laughs> Fuck jeans. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it was like, like, but it was, it was so interesting for me. It's like, dude, I love those threads and I love that right. presence, mm -hmm. but it, it created such a divide with my team. It made me less approachable, mm. bro. If I would have known that, that sneakers would help build and further my connectivity and my cultures and my teams, bro, I'd have been wearing fucking every CEO should wear sneakers. Like mm. every fucking yep. CEO should be wearing sneakers. But my point in that is I've always had this ability to like, know the streets and arts, bro. Plus, dude, I like I grew up in a tagging crew. Mm -hmm. Be a chameleon. Right? Like, dude, like it was like I grew up in a tagging crew, bro. I went to a school that was mostly Hispanic. Yeah. Right. Like I grew up in like in a in an affluent white neighborhood, but right. I went to school mm -hmm. in Midvale. Oh wow. Right? Okay. Like, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like dude, I hung out with like the Cubos and Serranios <laughs> hey! when I was a kid. Yeah. Right. And like and I was the friends with both of them. Yeah. And I wasn't a jock either, dude. I was a bowler who sold cigarettes in tag buildings. <laughs> Bro. So it was yeah. like, dude, I was cool with everybody. Yeah. Awesome. Like, listen, no, no one was trying to like there was no beef. I mm -hmm. gotta kick it with all the crews. Yeah. And that was an interesting dynamic for me because I was an artist. I understood street art. Yeah. Right, I was hustling. I had something that people wanted. I had a kind of an underground business. Right, I had the respects of of the of the Mexicanos and Chicanos, and I, dude, I had the respect of the jocks because they all smoked cowboy killer cigarettes, dude, and I hung out <laughs> with their girlfriends, and all that shit was cool. So it was like for me, dude, it was like, dude, I kind of had everybody on my side, mm -hmm. and that like created this interesting, like you call it a chameleon, but just called the this ability to be comfortable. Oh yeah, with all walks of life. Bro, like, dude, it's like, there was a time, like, dude, when I was in high school, like, dude, I did a beer run with my buddies that were Serenios, right? We, like, the, all the shit that went on, it was kind of yeah. wild and shit. I didn't even drink. I was right. just along for the ride. Right. Like, I'm going to snatch a, a case with you and take off running <laughs> together, dude. And, like, in the same time, dude, that, that same summer, bro, like, I went to Lake Powell with, like, one of the most affluent families or the most affluent families in Sandy and hung out on their houseboat. Wow. Right? And so that's kind of interesting in here, so dude. This is my first brand. Sunday's Best is our first brand where literally, dude, all culture shows up. You know, it's it's crazy to me because I wouldn't think it like yeah. even like Ginger Street or like Dirty Bird or other things. But here it's like, dude, I, like I'll put it out there like the Polynesian community here. Huge, huge. support. Oh, yeah. We never had yeah. it before. Huge. Oh, OK. OK. Support. Yeah. Here. Mm -hmm. Right. Like a big Polynesian community, a, a lot from like professionals, like yeah, uh, yeah. The, the professional athletes here, whether that be themselves, they're they're significant others, their families. Like this has just created this space that people want to be in. And dude, it just comes with that responsibility too. So I feel like I just have an, I have a, an ability to kind of entertain all of those walks. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. That's, That's dope. dope yeah. I mean, I will say, I'm glad you recognize it here. But I'll tell you, I recognize it at 30 bird. Yeah. I remember seeing the line of yeah. people waiting yeah. and the diversity yeah. Yeah. in that line. And I was in Ogden <clears throat> visiting my parents uh, uh, a few weeks back. 
and kind of same thing. Like there was a lot of different ethnic mm. people mm. in that line waiting to get lunch. And I was yeah. like, man, this guy got something different about what he's doing. You know, how much of that too, by the way, like I love hearing that. Um, cause so many people say, Oh, I want to create space. Yeah. And whether you do or not, by mm -hmm. the way, that's up to you. Yeah. Some people don't. Yeah. Some people are like, listen, dude, I want to be narrow. Yeah. And I'm okay with like <clears throat> yeah. you. But when you want to like cast a pretty wide net, you got to be careful too. Cause you cast, you try to catch everything. Mm -hmm. Right. And the biggest thing for me was just to show up <clears throat> principally, like fundamentally within our team to just create space. Like do our thing, like create this elevated experience, but don't make it pretentious. Right. Yeah. Like create this kick ass environment, but like let it be casual. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and to me, like, I just didn't mean, that's like what kind of sexy means to me. Like yeah. everyone has their own interpretation of what's hot. Yeah. Right. And so to me, it's just like, there, there's an intimacy. A, a, it's, it's romantic. Yes. It's, there's something about it that, that I think does connect people. For sure. But here's what I want to comment on the line specifically is I feel like that's you, Tom, dude. I feel like, bro, you grew up here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like dude in the nineties, <laughs> there was like two, two black families in my whole neighborhood. Like Talk two, bro. Uh, like I knew them all. You could like go to, you could go to uh, July Fourth at Sugar House Park and see almost every black person that lived there in Utah. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah. That's yeah. a like, fact. Like, like, like that. That was like reality. Like I'm. I, and I, and dude. I and I literally. It was like, and you knew the family. Yeah. Right. But like as a kid, dude, and I and I say this like candidly, like you'd be out and about. You just you didn't know. Yeah. Like in the nineties, eighties, yeah. and nineties, it was it was predominantly white. Yeah. yeah. Like white affluent Utah. Yeah. Like white like white Mormon Utah. Yeah. And now, dude, I feel like, dude, we we're like cultured and yep. we're this like beautiful melting pot. Yeah. yeah. I think it's furthered our culture in so Absolutely. many ways. Yeah. Your platform's been a beautiful, I think, connectivity and also just projecting and 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 sharing. But I go like, dude, I feel like that's Utah now. Yeah, absolutely. Like I feel like now in Utah, it's like every fifth person you see yeah. has some level of Personal diversity. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And and I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, I love that. It's yeah. beautiful to see. Yeah. Like even even like, you know, you would think of like South Jordan is the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. You'd think South Jordan and and when my girls and I lived in South Jordan a few years ago, we had this really interesting experience because we lived be like between two temples. We had the Crenshaw, like Crenshaw temple mm -hmm. and the Mormon temple. <clears throat> and our neighborhood was like this interesting kind of melting pot. But it was like, it was, it was like pretty much like you were either Indian mm -hmm. of Indian descent and you, and you were, uh, you, you know, you went to that to temple and, and the businesses that are around mm -hmm. or you were Mormon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but there was like this middle section like us, they were like this hybrid yeah. and there was a lot of diversity in there, but you had this neighborhood that was like fluid yeah. and yeah. it was just like, and it was cultural. Like you'd show up to the neighborhood, like night games in this community, we'd do like, you know, like the, the, uh, the, the potlucks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you would see these families mm -hmm. coming together, bro. That didn't happen here nope. in the nineties. Yeah. Did not. And I don't think it happened in the early two thousands. Yeah. No, I think it's like, like the last, the last 10, 10 years. years. Yeah, exactly. And, and dude, by the way though, I think the last two years, I think the last two to three years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Utah has really, yeah. has really become the pandemic diverse, did man. a lot for that. A lot of yeah. relocation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of opportunity. Um, like, you know, I know we've been talking a, a bit about JC, right? Yeah. But like, dude, I feel like JC's been great for this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, definitely. For sure. and he, you know, dude, I remind him of that. Dude, I'll kick him a message from time to time. He's like, dude, I appreciate everything you're doing for this city mm -hmm. from high fashion to, like culture to yeah. hip hop to, mm -hmm. I mean, bro, homie's bringing Ice Cube to a to a basket to yeah. our game, dude. Yeah. Like Ice Cube his, never uh, came to the Delta uh, Center unless he was doing a performance. Yeah, Bear, his little brother is one of yeah. the hottest DJs out yeah. here now. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dude. Like Manson, Bear, all yeah. those guys, the stuff that they're doing in the club scene. Like, dude, it's just it's cool to see. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's, it's really um, I appreciate you guys recognizing like the effort and involvement. Absolutely, mm -hmm. because um, absolutely, like I feel. Like when I can walk into Feist and mm -hmm. a pop-up like that, walk yeah. in the back and get that kind of respect mm -hmm. from that community. And then I can walk into Silicon Slopes and get that kind of respect yeah. from yeah. that community. To me, that's like, that's what Utah's about. Yep. Yep. That's what neighborhood's about. Mm -hmm. And if I can be a bit of the accelerant, if I can be a bit of that conduit, if I can help take other people, or if I can just help culture mesh, mm -hmm. bro. And that's what we're talking about. Yeah. This is culture meshing. This absolutely. is what yeah. you guys are doing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, and... Um, and so just honored to be on the platform to be able to chop it up with you guys. 
and uh, the fact that you're creating space and, and recognizing the things that we're doing, man, I appreciate it. No, we appreciate, we appreciate having you, that, man. Yeah, you were talking sure. that shit. This is my favorite episode <laughs> oh, today. <shit. laughs> today. Oh, man. Facts. Today. Listen, you had some great ones too, we, man. We so have. That's, that's what that's I'm some, saying. But this, talk, this, but like, well, we've said it for a while. Every time we have a new guest, the next guest got to level up. Oh, yeah. Every time because you come on here <laughs> and you talk that shit. Yeah. yeah. So next guest. They better talk you that better shit. You better get your shit straight. You better, listen, Karina. You being called out. Hey, listen, you hey, listen, you being called out, girl. Uh, you know Karina, right? I, the, the real estate chick. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she, yeah. yeah she, we got her next. Oh, shit, listen. Listen, <laughs> we set the tone, girl. Yeah, she's in here. Like, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. she, she eats yeah. in here. Yeah. Like, I would say, like, I'm not trying to throw out too much, but maybe weekly. I don't she, know. She, she in here, though. Uh, <laughs> uh, man. I'm going to tell you right now, dude, you guys always have a place at my table. Appreciate, Appreciate you. that. Appreciate like, that. You have a place Likewise. at my table. And, and yeah, you yeah. have a place. Anytime you want to yeah. come on here, yeah. just vent, talk your shit. Listen, I would I'd love to, like, we should pick this back up. Absolutely, do, yeah. Kick it back up, do another late night. Yeah. Uh, making it happen. And uh, also just, um, you know, as we're getting this new program off the ground, mm -hmm. right? You guys understand it, the neighborhoods that you're coming yeah. from, the people that you're connected with. I'm really excited to see it. By the way, when you're up in Ogden, like go fuck with Wimp and Fritz. His tacos mm -hmm. are dope. Lefty oh, yeah. and his boy, they're such great people. Uh, but um, yeah, the Kick It Forward program, uh, it's meaningful to us. Okay. And um, really being able to provide uh, some dope ass shoes to kids that really deserve it. These are kids in the neighborhood. We're not saying, hey, we're trying to find those like single parent families yeah. or just title one schools. We're really what we're looking for is, is kids that are in their communities that are making a big difference at home. They're making it, they're, they're trying at home. They're applying themselves at school. They're participating in their neighborhoods and they just don't have those choices yet. And, yep. and we know what it feels like to put on that crispy pair of shoes, man. There's a confidence that follows like being laced up. Yeah. So um, I just like, that's like my only ask for our time together is like, help us, you know, spread the word, Absolutely. help us send some, yeah. um, some nominees as you see that thing come off the ground. Cause we really want to help lace up the future leaders of our communities. Hell yeah. And I think these are the kind of people that we're talking about that we had a chance of becoming someone in our neighborhood mentored us and yeah. believed in us and gave us a shot that they saw something in us that maybe we didn't see in ourselves yet. And uh, we want to duplicate that. Yeah. You know, we want to duplicate that. So uh, pay attention to that program. Yeah. Um, Each one, teach one. Yeah. It's, it's coming. Yeah. It's anytime. Coming or sure, or if, if there's anybody lefty, you want to send yeah. our direction oh, yeah. to kind of talk yeah. a little bit more. He's got such a great yeah. story too. Yeah. Definitely. You guys will really dig send, that cat. Send him our way. We'd love to, yeah. we'd love to elevate yeah. that story for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the best way here, here's the reality. The only platform that I manage me personally, <laughs> I got other platforms out there. The LinkedIn's, all the shit that's out there, the websites, <laughs> the comment sections, all those things, but Instagram. Just okay. Michael McHenry. Gotcha. Uh, Michael McHenry on Instagram. That's me. If you DM me, I may not get back to you the first time, uh, but uh, but message me. Yeah. Like I'll comment with you if I'm leaving a note. If I'm leaving a comment on you. If I'm DMing you, that's me. Mm, right. Okay. Um, and it's and it's the Michael McHenry, like the real one. Yeah. It's the one with the blue check. Blue mark, check. The verified yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Not any other ones trying to slip in there Flex. asking you for shit. Buy my Bitcoin, you know, or like Flex. whatever the bullshit is. Flex. Like Tell just em. just that one with the with the blue check mark, baby. Hell um, yeah. but that's me. That's the absolute best place. Cool. Um, and then uh, you want to catch me, like face to face, baby. All you gotta do is come in these dining rooms. I'm here every single day. Talk that every shit. Day. Hell yeah. 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 That's what I'm talking well, hell about. Hell yeah. Appreciate you guys, hey, man. Appreciate Many you, cheers. man. Appreciate yeah. you. Hey, sh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got to like stretch after that yeah, conversation. Yeah, God go. damn. You know what I mean? Well, hey, check it out. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Young OG Perspective, where we give you a new perspective. A fresh perspective. A Young OG Perspective, baby. Yeah.